This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. A leading association for U.S. pharmacists has instructed its members to stop providing drugs for use in lethal injections, a change that could make carrying out executions even more difficult for death penalty states. Late last month, the American Pharmacists Association delegates approved a declaration saying it, quote, discourages pharmacists' participation in executions on the basis that such activities are fundamentally contrary to the role of pharmacists as providers of health care, unquote. Pharmacists now joining um, physicians and anesthesiologists and having national organizations with ethical codes that discourage their members from partaking in executions. For more, we go to Richmond, Virginia, where we're joined by Dr. Leonard Edlow. He co-wrote the American Pharmacists Association New Policy Against Supplying Lethal Injection Drugs. Dr. Edlow, welcome to Democracy Now! Uh, explain this new position and what it will mean for the death penalty in the United States. Well, as pharmacists, we take an oath that we will uphold the health of individuals. What happened, uh, several of the European countries no longer supply the drugs necessary to make it what we might call an efficient process. And so they have to turn to compounding pharmacies. And the, in fact, the class of drugs used really don't produce the sedation. And so uh, what happens now? Uh, the states will not be able, will encourage them not to go to these pharmacies to have these drugs compounded, and the process uh, just won't take place. You probably remember the case out in Oklahoma where the patient was not sedated, a patient actually died of a heart attack. Uh, it's not the right drug, it doesn't work. And so we just don't want our pharmacists being involved either in the dispensing of the drugs that are used, because really, uh, the prescriptions are illegal. They aren't prescriptions. They're purchase orders. And uh, it, it just doesn't work. And after hearing your conversation, it just makes me feel so much better about what my part I played last week in getting this resolution passed. How difficult was it to get past Dr. Edlow and, and the American Pharmacists Association? Well, once it got going, it wasn't hard. It was, it, it was difficult from the beginning because so many people I talked to didn't want to be involved, didn't want to sign. Uh, and then it was just like at the last minute, everything just came together. The compounding pharmacist took a position and no one spoke against the uh, resolution. There was a lot of discussion because we go through a long process. This process has been about a year uh, and people have come up with all kind of crazy questions. So we wouldn't uh, support the uh, resolution. We had to make some changes uh, to adopt and uh but what you read is basically what we adopted and i think uh, even though we don't have the power that the resolution of the anesthesiologists have in other words if they're involved they can lose their certification so they can't go to the hospital this is just calling on the ethics and i think 99 percent of the pharmacists will go along with that anything in society that's the way it is dr leonard edlow i want to thank you for being with us uh, we will link to the american pharmacists association new policy